Well, howdy, everybody. It's hard to believe, but we are in week 10 already. It flies by. I know it does for me. Probably not for you because you're having to do all the work and get graded, but it goes by fast for me, which is good. Um, anyways, you guys are doing a great job. I'm going to do two videos this week. One's going to be on the week 10 assignment quick parts. The other one's going to be on the uh, autocorrect assignment because there's some uh, things in the quick parts. There's some gotchas in this one when the course designer so i don't create the course i'm here to guide you and, and give you instruction um, there's someone at byu idaho who designs the course and designs all the documents they they did some tricky stuff in this one they put some stuff in your way that you're gonna have to remove or you're gonna have to find uh, make you do a little bit of work a little bit more work uh, than you normally would so i'm gonna i'm gonna show you all those gotchas uh, so that we don't get frustrated with why is this not working or why isn't it not looking the same. So we're going to dive right into it. This may be a little bit longer than normal, but it's okay. I want to make sure you guys have all the information necessary to be successful with the assignment, but also learn how to do quick parts. So quick parts are pretty cool. It allows you to put in some just uh, standardized text or formatted information, um, different cover pages, different different things like that. So if you look at our rubric for this week, it's 10 items that we're looking to grade. So just be careful. And what we're really wanting you to do is make your document look just like that PDF. Okay. This is what it looks like to begin with, just a bunch of text. And I'm going to go through the, the items to be successful for this document. And also just kind of show you some of the sneaky stuff that they put into the document that may trip you up okay so first thing we're going to do and i've done this a few times now just to make sure that i've got it uh, got it down uh, there's no real correct order of operations on this one just you know make your way through the best way you know how to i know that adult learners won't need to be at the top so that's the first kind of haha -ha, that doesn't need to be at the top i know that this is going to be a header one but before i do that I want to apply a banded theme because the the assignment information said to go ahead and put in a banded theme. And I'm going to do that stuff. I'm going to do the theme and the colors first. So what I want to do is I want to go to design and you want to go to themes over here on the left hand side. And there's one called banded. You notice it has blue in it. That's OK. So we're going to select banded. We're going to go over here to colors. I hit this drop down and I'm going to hit orange. I'm sorry, red. Don't know why I was fixated on orange. So there we go. I'm going to put red. Now I'm going to put in the cover page now so that you can see that uh, the quick parts, how it works. So if you go to the insert tab in the ribbon, there's a button called quick parts. And you drop that down. There's a bunch of auto text, document properties, fields. What I want to go to is the building blocks organizer. So you click on that guy. And if you, it'll bring up this huge list. There's so many items in this list, but what you want to do is little tip here, click on the, the word name and you select that and it will give you a alphabetized order of all of the items in there. So we're looking for banded. So there's three items that are banded cover page, headers, footers. So, the two you're going to be using for this document are banded cover page and banded headers, just to let you know. So we're going to select banded. You notice it looks blue, but we already set the theme to be banded red. So I'm going to select banded and click insert. And magically, the banded cover page comes in. It's all red. <clears throat> and then I'm going to do the header while I'm at it. So if you double click in the header field, when you do that, it's going to pull up the header and footer little quick item here at the top. So you can go to quick parts. Again, we're going to go to building blocks organizer, organize it by name, find banded, and we want a banded header. We'll insert that. And then we'll just put the title, which is adult learners. All right. Now here's one of the tricky things they put in this document. They messed up the, the headers, so they are not going to all be the same. So you notice this page one. There's nothing on the cover page. That's good. Page one, page two, page three, page four. Okay, good. So that worked that time the way it should. And then we're going to put in our footers. 
So we're going to put in our page number. We want it to be at the bottom of the page and the middle. And you notice that it didn't start on the cover page. That's good. We have page one all the way down to page four. So now we have our headers and our footers and our cover page and the red theme. That's all done. Um, the theme already comes with the author field, but what I would like you to do is just kind of, you can just play around with it, delete these out, delete out the author field real quick. I'm just going to show you how to insert the author field if you didn't have one already there as part of your theme. So we're going to go to insert, quick parts, and we want to go to field. And then there's a list of all the fields that you can insert, and we just want the author field. And it's going to ask you, do you want it all uppercase, lowercase, first capital, title case? Oh, let's do uppercase for this, for this one. And it uppercased his entire name. So now I'm going to go back into my document because there's some things that we need to do to the document now. Okay, so the assignment is asking us to do a header one or heading one for that guy. And then before we can do anything else, I've noticed that there's indents at the beginning of every paragraph, but in our example, there are no indents at the beginning of the paragraphs. That's another kind of gotcha. Oh, they put that in there. You have to know that you want to you want this to look exactly like the PDF, which is no indents at the beginning of the paragraphs. So what I will do is I will do control A to select all of the text. I'm going to go to the little pop out for paragraph and I'm going to go to, under indentation. There's a little field here called special. I'm going to do the drop down and choose none. And I click OK. It gets rid of those indentations except for one. There's another gotcha here. So they put this guy in there and it doesn't have an indentation. It's got a bunch of spaces and a tab. So we're just going to get rid of those. And I'm going to come over here and do that. So now we've gotten rid of all of the indentations that were not asked for. Now there's one paragraph that they want double indented, which is the one that starts with a wide range of concepts. So just put your cursor right next to the word A, to the, word a the letter A, and you can do this guy here, increase indent, do it twice. And there you go, you got that uh, indented twice. I'm also gonna change the text, the font to match kind of the header. So I'm gonna do a control A again, and we're gonna go over here to font, and I'm gonna do Calibri, because I like that one. Okay, so it changed everything to Calibri. You can do that with the, the header as well change that font. Right now it's Times New Roman. I'm not a fan of Times New Roman, so we'll change it to Calibri. All right, so now we've got the fonts the way we want. We've got this double indent done. I've already got my header one for this first header. And then there's two other headers that we need to do. So there's the self-efficacy and learning. Put your cursor near that. Do a heading two, because if you notice in our example document, there are a smaller heading than this main heading up here. And then we have one other one which is teaching strategies for adults and you're going to make that heading two as well. And they're all going to be just in the line. We don't have to worry about doing other things with them. So that's really it for modifying the text. What we want to do is we want to now insert a cover page, uh, insert a table of contents and a reference page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my reference page and I'm going to put my cursor next to the word Flint. And I am going to go to Layout and then go to Breaks. And I want a section break continuous. Oops, sorry. I didn't mean continuous. A section break, next page. There we go. That's how you can tell I'm doing this on the cuff. All right, so now we have a section break for this guy. I'm going to put a carriage return, which is just an enter. And I'm going to put the word References. And I want references to be a heading one. You'll find out why later. Okay. So now I'm at the bottom here. I've got references. And what I want to do is make sure I've got my header. So I'm going to insert my header on this one. Because this was a new page that got added after I put the headers in. So I'm just going to do the banded header. I'm going to insert that guy. 
automatically comes in with that header. And I want to make sure I get my footer, which is the page number at the bottom of the page, centered. So this is one of those gotchas that comes up. All of a sudden, you may find either your page number comes up correctly or it comes up as a zero for mine. So what you're going to do is right click on that number, go to format page numbers, and it's set to start at zero. Nope, we want it to be a continuous from the previous section. Okay, so now it shows us page four. And then what the assignment calls for is to do a hanging indent for the references. So this is where I found a formatting error with the way they created this document. So if I were to highlight this reference and do the proper way of doing a hanging indent, which is to go to paragraph, the little pop out, there's indentation and under the special field, you can go to hanging and select that one. So watch what happens. This is just the document that they gave. If I click OK, it only does the hanging indent for this third line. But our example document has a hanging indent for the two lines following that. So rather than trying to reinvent the wheel, I'm going to undo that one. And I'm going to give you a trick to just go ahead and use for this assignment. Because otherwise, you may have to start from scratch. And I don't want you to have to do that. So we'll just do an indent right there at the board workbook. Same with this one. We'll start with education, put an indent. Student services, indent. And I'll show you another thing. So if I, this is only a two line one. If I were to go here and go to hanging indent, it doesn't do it because of the way this, this paragraph is formatted. So I'm gonna undo that. And I will totally accept this as correct because the assignment was make this look exactly like the PDF and not spend 10 hours trying to make it look like that PDF. At the end of the day, when you print this out and you put it on someone's desk, they wouldn't know if you did a hanging indent or if you did a regular indent. <clears throat> and I'm showing you how to do the hanging indent, which is go to paragraph, pop out, and that's under special, and it's hanging. But the way that these paragraphs are formatted, it's not doing it correctly. All right, so now we have our references, we have our hanging indents, we have our page numbers, the one thing that we're missing now is our table of contents. So we'll put your put your cursor at the, the first letter here, characteristics, and we are going to go to layout. We want to do a break. We want to do a section break next page. I think I did a continuous, didn't I? Nope, I didn't. Uh, Word is fun sometimes. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put in the table of contents, and then put my section break. So we'll go to insert. Actually, nope, table of contents is under references. We'll go to references. We're going to come over here to the left-hand side where it says table of contents. And we're going to insert a table of contents. It has the word table of contents, which matches what our example is. It has the words table of contents up here. So with my cursor at the beginning, Go to Table of Contents, Insert a Table of Contents, and you notice that it automatically inserted it, and it automatically has the page numbers and all of the information that we need for our Table of Contents. That's one of those quick part things that's pretty cool. It automatically does that for you. It automatically takes care of the dot .leader tabs. It takes care of everything for you. So when we had you do dot .leader tabs, it's just so you know how to do it, but there's quick ways of being able to just automatically do it. So now, we want to insert that break next page. There we go. Now you will notice something here, and this is another one of the gotchas. And it just really depends on which order of operations you're doing this paper in. The page numbers aren't accurate now. So it's saying that the characteristic of adult learners is on page one. That's actually on page, well, see, aha, another gotcha. Check your page numbers, make sure it says set for continue from previous section. Now we know it's on page two, page three, and we have page four, and then we have page five. So now the characteristics of adult learners starts on page two, but our table of contents is saying it's a one. So if you click anywhere in the table of contents, this little button at the top appears. You're going to click update table, and you only want it to update the page numbers. So you click OK. And then it magically updates it. Now it says page two, three, four, and five, which is correct. All right, so that is our document in its entirety. 
We hit on all of the parts here. We added the theme, uh, we added the reference page, table of contents. Uh, we formatted the headers and footers correctly, and we made it look exactly like our example, which is what we want. So this is a lengthy one, lengthy video, but it's because there's some things that they put into the document that can trip you up as you're going along, which is the page numbers, some of the formatting of the text. Just make sure you're looking at your page numbers when you're all done and that you are updating the table of contents to reflect the correct page numbers. All right, feel free to reach out. We're getting to some of the more advanced features in Word, so it can be difficult, especially if you run into a problem that can trip you up for a couple hours. I would hate for that to happen. So if you find that there's something that's holding you up for about a half hour, 45 minutes, which is way too long, and Google or any of our references aren't providing the answers that you need, you can always reach out to me. I can help you out and uh, give you either a personalized video or we can do a Zoom session. So I'm here to help you guys. I uh, hope you have a great week. Sorry for the lengthy video on this one, but I felt it was needed. And I'll do another video for the uh, other assignment uh, probably a little bit later in the week. Take care, everybody.